Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Friday, September the 6th, race number 7 at Belmont Park. We're going six furlongs on opening day on the inner turf for the $100,000 Christy Cat Stakes. You can play this opening day Belmont card with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at drf.com forward slash bet and immediately receive a $100 deposit match. Let's meet the field of three-year-old Philly turf sprinters going in the Christy Cat, and you can download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them and handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one Peaceful, a very lightly raced daughter of Declaration of War going out for trainer Jonathan Thomas, second behind St. Moon in the career debut. We'll get to St. Moon in a bit. But then she broke her maiden last time out at Saratoga, and I kind of like the way she did it. Let's swing into the stretch of that race. There wasn't a lot of pace going on. Peaceful as is kind of becoming a little bit of a bad habit, didn't break well, but ended up four wide on the turn. And you see her in the yellow silks on the outside gradually wear this field down. She seems like a good bodied filly that'll appreciate a little bit more ground and she's got a lot of upside. Yeah, she does. Good finish from this race, especially as you say, they had to take her four wide on the turn just to get her clear. Um, I like the way that she closed it down. She did the same thing basically in her career debut. I mean, she she must have missed a break two or three lengths in there. Um, just came with a really good finish. You knew she was going to take a step forward last time, and she did. And she's got even more upside. Gates kind of the key for her, though. She's going to yeah. have to break out of there from the inside post. Formulator fact for trainer Jonathan Thomas. Past three years, last out maiden winners on turf. He knows where to place them. Five for 14, a $3.14 return on investment. One of the bigger prices in the race is the number two, Jen Emily, who was claimed for $32,000 three starts back and is turning back off of a two-turn race at Saratoga. That was a high-priced claimer, and as they turn into the stretch, Jen Emily's got to look at this. She's on the outside in the white silks, but she's just going to flatten out. Perhaps, Mike, like a filly that didn't want this extra distance. I think that's how you have to look at her if you want to give her a, another shot here at a price. Um, you can say that she certainly handled the turf fine anyway, because that was a bit of a question coming into this race. And maybe the distance just got to her. Not a bad performance. I don't think it was a great field. Um, she's facing some way better horses here. So even if she likes to turn back, she's got to improve again. I'm terrified of the three Brooke Marie and maybe I should have upgraded her a little bit in my selections because I didn't think that trip worked out in the Galway. Arad Ortiz just seemed very conservative with her in the early portion of the race. She got shuffled back down towards the inside near last and as they turn into the stretch you're going to see Irad swing her all the way out. She's in the red cap and she's going to get to the outside and she still has a lot of work to do. Let's give her some credit for making up this late ground. Yeah, she finished really well in this race. Um, you know, she's just really improved as a three-year-old this year. Off the layoff back in May uh, over this uh, distance at Belmont, she ran a very deceptively good race that day. I mean, they were crawling on the lead in front of her, and she made up a lot of ground from last night. Ran really well, beat a weaker field, two back at Monmouth. Um, but ran really well again in the Galway. I'm with you. I think she's a dangerous horse in this race. Pace in the race likely to come from the Georgie Navarro trainee, the four St. Moon. And we're going to watch St. Moon's most recent race at Saratoga where she just blasted off to the front. She's the gray and she's going to win fairly comfortably. On the far outside is Turf War, who is the number seven in the Christie Cat. Turf War for Chad Brown just had a lot to do turning into the stretch. Chad's showing confidence in the third start to run her in a stakes race. Yeah, that, that's true enough. I mean, St. Moon, you know, she's just speed. She's won two of three since they switched her over to turf. You know, in that last race that we just watched there, you know, she got bumped both sides at the start. So it's not like she just, you know, was like a rocket out of the gate and got to the lead, but she's fast once she found herself right to the top, never faced a challenge. I think it's the best race that she's ever run. And as for Turf War, is she just simply a filly that lacks speed and needs a little bit of help up front? Because it is interesting to me that they're trying stakes foes uh, after two races in which she couldn't get up. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, she doesn't have a lot of speed in each of her two starts over here. They've just She's wound up at the back of the field. I think she's actually finished pretty well both times. Um, maybe this race will set up better for her. 
Chad's also showing a lot of confidence in the five, Dancing Vega. Uh, this horse returned off a lengthy layoff, first time North America for Chad, took a lot of money at Saratoga in a two-turn race and kind of flattened out as the favorite. Now, we've seen Chad excel over the years with turf horses cutting back in distance, but I'm worried that this horse might get outrun early. I'm worried about that too. I, I just wonder if she'll um, just take a big step forward here. She, her only race as a two-year-old was a really impressive win. I mean, she she ran so well that day. She came off the layoff in April. They pounded her in a group three, and she just didn't really run that well. And then she came over here at a mile at Saratoga, and she did not run well again. Um, you know, maybe cutting back will really work for her. I'm afraid of her, Dan. I just, I don't know if I really want to bet her in this race because she didn't really do that much running last time. The number six comedy did some really nice things as a two-year-old overseas. This was a group three winner in France, and she's not your typical European horse. She is fast out of the gate. She yeah. likes to go to the front. Whether that means she can pressure the Navarro horse, that's a different story. She's coming off a long layoff for Michael Dickinson, and as we know over the years, you really don't worry about layoffs with Dickinson. The last time we saw her was the Shivali Park Stakes. She was just simply overmatched in that group one. Here's a formulator fact for the mad genius. Over the past year, three-year-olds only on turf, 33% winners, a 358 ROI. I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach, but nothing surprises me with Dickinson. Yeah, me either. Um, she's very fast. I think you sort of hit the nail on the head there. She's not a typical European horse when you watch her races. She's fast right from the gate. They go right to the front with her, and they don't look back with her. She won three times in a row, including that group three. The group one horses were way too good for her, um, but she probably fits better with these horses. And to me, she's supposed to be speed in this race. So, you know, listen, maybe the Navarro horse um, is going to go to the front here, but this horse is supposed to go with her. She's fast. And that's a good segue for the time form U.S. pace projector. Of course, we won't have uh, any sort of rating for the six comedy, being that she's raced in Europe her entire career. But perhaps you could wedge her in between the four and the two, and maybe this pace will heat up just a little bit. Queen of Bermuda is the number eight, and Queen of Bermuda just tried to stretch out last time out in the Ontario Colleen, and that just didn't work out for her. It was a pretty good field. Sister Peacock turned back in distance and ran third in that Galway at Saratoga with an 87 buyer. I think she's honest. I think she likes to sprint, but I wonder if we've seen her best already. Yeah, I wonder the same thing. They ran her a lot as a two-year-old, and she was actually pretty good and ran a good fourth in the Breeders' Cup. Um, this year, I don't think she's run as well, but she has stakes placed twice sprinting on the grass. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Christie Cat Stakes. Mike, you and I were both impressed with the way Rose Flower finished off that listed stake at Maison Lafitte last time out. She was 26 to 1. She didn't run like a 26 to 1 shot. She was near the back of the field, turning into the two furlong pole in that straight race. She weaved her way through traffic, and when she saw a hole late, that was an explosive late kick. Yeah, I allowed myself to be taken by the run she made last time. I don't I don't know if – I feel like six might be a little too short for her. That's the one thing that concerns right. me. Um, but you know what? When she won off the layoff back in April, that was also seven. But, you know, she was on top of that field by the time they got to about the two furlong pole. So maybe she won't get outrun. We'll see, Dan. I, I, it might be too short for her, but she was so good last time with a, a big explosive run. And I think comedy could set this pace up for her. I'm going to give her a chance in here if she's around that morning line price. I, I made her my second choice basically for the argument that you made against her that maybe this distance is just yeah. a little bit short for her. But again, that was a really strong run and she's now in the Clement barn. I like the way Peaceful finished off her debut. I think she's scopy, has a lot of improvement. I need her to break and at least settle in mid pack. I went 1 9 6 and 3. I'm afraid of Brooke Marie. You went yeah. 9 3. Yeah, nine, three, and one. They're they're my main three. I, I guess that the the one Chad there, Dancing Vega. I don't know. I'm a little afraid of her. I put her fourth. We'll see what happens. It's the one hundred thousand dollar Christy Cat Stakes. It's your Friday DRF bets race of the day, and make sure to get involved on opening day of the Belmont Fall Championship meeting with a DRF bets account. Sign up. Get that $100 in deposit matches and start hammering away with DRF bets. Approximate post time for the Christie Cat, 612 Eastern. Good luck.